Hi, Sher Pindarvis here. Welcome to video two of the Fine Art series. In this video, we'll explore brushes, media, and color tools within a workflow using Painter 2020's helpful new interface. Let's begin by opening a new file. Choose File, New. At the top of the New Image dialog box, we have an opportunity to name our image. Here we have the canvas presets, and I've chosen small painting so that we have a size of file that it will be easy to see the texture, bristle marks of the brush strokes that I'll be demonstrating. Here we have the width and height and the resolution. And over here to the right, the background paper color, which I'm going to leave white and I'm going to leave the paper at its default as well. And here we have basic paper and then click OK to create our new image. Before we get started trying out the brushes, it's important to set up brush tracking. Brush tracking is an important preference located under the Painter 2020 menu. Painter 2020 Preferences Brush Tracking. Brush tracking allows us to customize Painter to our own hand, including parameters such as pressure and speed. And I'm going to make a stroke field right here. So it's recording my pressure and the speed of my stroke. And I'm going to click OK to accept. Now that we have brush tracking set up, let's try out brushes. I want to demonstrate a wide variety of brushes and media to encourage you to explore and play. I'm going to click here on this little arrow to open the brush selector in the Painter 2020 brushes library. Wet media includes acrylic, artist oils, oils, watercolor, thick paint, and more. The brush categories are on the left and the variants are on the right. We'll begin with the acrylics and gouache at the top of the category list. And the first brush that I'm going to paint with is opaque acrylic. While we have the brush selector and painter 2020 brushes library open, I want to point out an important feature here in the brush selector. You see here, recent brushes. You're able to click on any one of these and go back to a brush that you recently painted with. And the recent brushes are also available in a little panel underneath the window menu. Window, recent brushes. So we can set it up to have it along the top of our image if we so choose. In the color panel, I have a rich blue chosen to show off our strokes. I'm going to go over here to the brush selector and choose acrylics and gouache and the opaque acrylic. The opaque acrylic is a versatile brush. It paints expressive crisp edge strokes. I like to use it to lay in areas of flat color as it paints quickly. I also like to use it in smaller sizes to paint crisp details. Next, let's try out the Real Dry Flat. The Real Dry Flat paints beautiful bristle texture. You can pull it down to paint a narrow line or pull it across to paint a thicker stroke. Next, let's explore the Artist Oils. The Artist Oils paint luscious, oily strokes. And we'll start with the bristle brush right here. And I'm going to choose another color and paint over it. You see when I press down hard, I'm painting the opaque pink. But as I lighten up, I pull some of the blue out through the stroke. The Artist Oil brushes and media can be used on the canvas and on default layers. A few favorites are the Bristle Brush and Real Oil Short. Pull down to the Real Oil Short. Now I'm going to choose the blue again, the Real Oil Short. 
paints sensitive, beautiful bristle strokes. I'm going to reset to the default size. Now let's choose the grainy blender. So I'm going to scroll back up here and choose the grainy blender. The grainy blender. Blend two colors. Pull one color into the other. And it's also showing the paper grain that you have active here. Now let's explore a few of the oils brushes. The fine soft brush paints ex soft expressive strokes. And let me choose a contrasting color here. As you see, we get a little bit of blending. I like to use the fine soft oil brush to paint soft edge strokes, for instance clouds, or to paint a graduated sky. I also use it for skin when painting a portrait. Now let's check out the clumpy wet flat. And I'll choose the blue again. I'm going to hit reset to get back to the default size. The clumpy wet flat has some variation, bristle variation in the strokes. We'll choose the contrasting color and show how it mixes. I like to use the Speckle Fine Oil Brush for modeling forms. You can paint a tapered stroke if you vary pressure on the stylus as you pull a stroke. Now let's explore watercolor in Painter. Painter features three types of watercolor, digital watercolor, watercolor, and real watercolor. So first let's talk about digital watercolor. Digital watercolor can be used to paint on the canvas or on layers. So I'm going to start with the broad water brush and this rich blue that we have here. Grab my stylus and we'll make a mark here. You see the watery paint pools along the edges. You can choose another color. You see the beautiful transparent wash that we get here. Apply a little less pressure and we get a more transparent stroke and a narrower stroke. I like to look at the coarse mop brush and we'll go back to the blue. The coarse mop brush paints a thick and thin stroke depending on the pressure of your stylus and you get some diffusion along the edges of the stroke. Get more color mixing as you pull a pink stroke through the blue. Digital watercolor is versatile and it paints expressive transparent washes quickly and expressively. Watercolor and real watercolor require a watercolor media layer to paint on. So let's move on down here at the bottom of the category list and we'll choose watercolor. The first brush that we're going to choose is the flat grainy wash and I'm going to hit the reset right here and choose the blue. And we can paint a wash and you see how it percolates down beautifully. If we choose another color and pull through we'll see the colors mixing. And as you see we have a watercolor layer that was created when our brush touched the canvas. Now let's switch back to the blue and we'll choose the grainy wash bristle. The grainy wash bristle paints interesting brush marks, very expressive. You can see the bristle marks and you can see the grain. We'll choose another color and paint over the top. One of my favorite watercolor brushes. Now let's move on to the real watercolor one of the richest media in painter. Real watercolor is realistic, versatile, and rich. It paints beautiful transparent washes. Start with the real wet brush 
and the blue color. So you see how realistic the strokes are. And we'll choose the, the pink, paint over the top, and I'll choose the blue again. Another favorite is the Speckled Runny Palette Knife. And I'll just pull a stroke. Now this brush also incorporates flow map. So here it's using the clouds flow map. And right now we have basic paper texture. But most of the interaction that you see happening around the edges of this brush is coming from the clouds flow map. For an example that really shows off a flow map, try the noisy flow map fringe. And we'll choose the pink. The flow map that's chosen in the flow map panel is causing the water to pool along the edges in this pattern. Now let's check out some of the thick paint brushes. The thick paint is another media that requires its own media layer. And we, when we begin painting with thick paint brushes, you'll see a thick paint media layer appear in the layers panel to the right. So the first thick paint brush that we're going to work with is the smooth round oils down here at the bottom. The smooth round oils paints with smooth edges with a little bit of brush or bristle striation in the stroke. And it's luscious and rich. The next brush that we're going to work with is the Oils Palette Knife here. And I'm going to choose a blue again. The Oils Palette Knife paints crisp edge strokes with striations in the stroke. And you can build up thick paint by continuing to brush back and forth, applying the thicker paint. Now if I choose the pink paint over the top, you see we get some blending beautiful expressive brush. Make sure to explore more of the watercolor and oil and thick paint brushes. Now let's explore examples of dry media. For instance, the pastels and pencils. I've chosen the pens and pencils category in the brush selector and the 2B pencil and I want to make a graphite color so I'm going to desaturate this color so that I have a dark gray. Pick up my stylus and make some marks here. Now if I hold my stylus upright I can make an expressive thin mark but if I turn my stylus on the side I can shade with the 2B pencil really realistic and fantastic and you can see the paper texture showing in the strokes. The next one that I want to demonstrate is the real 6B soft pencil and I'm holding my stylus erect here for this thinner sketchy stroke and when I turn my stylus on the side I can shade with the feel of a softer 6B pencil and I want to point out that these dry media pencils can paint on the canvas or on a default layer. And because the thick paint layer was the last media layer that we painted on, when I touched the image with the 2B pencil, Painter generated a default layer for me to paint on. Now I'm going to choose a blue again, and I'm going to go up to the chalk pastel and crayons and choose the worn square pastel and make some marks with this. You see it really picks up the texture very nicely. Now with the pastels you can paint on a default layer or on the canvas and look at the beautiful layering of texture that I'm getting right here. So dig in and explore more of these brush categories in Painter. There are many to enjoy. 
Now that we've tried out a variety of brushes and media, let's check out the color tools. We touched on the color tools in video one, and here I'll touch on a few more color features. As we were trying out brushes, I chose the hue in the hue ring on the outside of the color palette. And I chose the shade or the tint of the color using the saturation value triangle. The temporal color wheel is another useful color wheel. You can access it quickly by double clicking the main color or additional color on the color palette. The temporal color wheel is a small color wheel that you can position over your image to match color accurately. And you can move it around by clicking and dragging in the clear area as I'm doing right here. When you're finished with the temporal color wheel, you can stow it away by double clicking the main or additional color in this video, we explored more of the painter interface and we used a variety of wet and dry media brushes. We'll use the color tools and the dry and wet media brushes in the painting project that follows in videos 3, 4, and 5. Happy painting!